This year we celebrate Rudolf Virchow's 200th birthday. He numbered among the most distinguished figures of 19th century medical science. And he was a Berliner, spending 56 of his 81 years in the capital city. In 1891, he was named its 43rd honorary citizen. The many years Virchow lived in Berlin left their mark. So come along with us on a walking tour of some of the most important places in Virchow's life in Berlin. He was born in 1821 as Rudolf Ludwig Karl Virchow in Schivelbein, Pomerania, now part of Poland. He was the only child of farmer and businessman Karl Christian Siegfried Virchow, himself the son of a master butcher. Alongside his regular schooling, Rudolf was taught foreign languages by a clergyman, allowing him to develop one of his talents early on. Virchow would eventually master not only the classical languages Latin, Greek, Hebrew, and Old Arabic, he also learned fluent English, French, Italian, and Dutch. In October 1839, at age 18, Rudolf Virchow moved to Berlin to begin studying medicine at the Perpignan Military Medical Academy. The rail journey from Schivelbein to Berlin lasted several hours, ending at the Stettin station, one of Berlin's major terminals at the time. Of the once imposing station building, only the former waiting hall remains standing today, above the underground Nordbahnhof City Rail Station. Across from the Charité University Hospital campus in Berlin's Mitte district, at the corner of Invalidenstraße and Scharnhorststraße, stands the main building of the former Pepinier Military Surgeons Academy. The four-year course in medicine here was tuition-free. Room and board were provided so that men who, like Rudolf Virchow, had only modest means could study here. To the left, next to a fountain relief on the side facing Invalidenstraße, is a commemorative plaque. On the left side of the plaque is a caducius, and on the right a rooster, a reference to the fact that students of the Military Surgeons Academy used to call themselves Pfeifena, a corruption of the word pepinier in Berlin slang. At age 22, Rudolf Virchow earned his Ph.D. in medicine and was named subordinate physician. He also worked in the clinic. At age 26, he was named Hospital Prosector for Charité's pathology department. All his life, Rudolf Virchow expressed his social and political views in thought and deed. Well known is his quotation, Medicine is a social science, and politics is nothing else but medicine on a large scale. In 1848, he published his famous analysis of an epidemic of hunger typhus in Upper Silesia. He championed left-wing liberal demands for reform and took part in the revolution of 48. On the southwest pylon of the Marshall Bridge at one end of the Reichstag Ufer and within sight of the former Reichstag, a plaque was dedicated in 1998 to Virchow's activities during the German revolutions of 1848. Rudolf Virchow's political activities led to his losing his position. Shortly after, he was appointed to a chair as Professor for Pathological Anatomy at the University of Würzburg. While there, he laid the essential foundations for a major work on cellular pathology. Rudolf Virchow was soon reinstated in Berlin and in 1856 appointed to the Chair for Pathological Anatomy at the Friedrich Wilhelms University and Director of Germany's first Institute for Pathology. It still occupies the building started by Virchow but only completed in 1906. Now it bears the name Rudolf Virchow Haus. Over the stairway landing in front of the entryway hangs a metal plaque inscribed with Virchow's basic tenet of cellular pathology, Omnis Calula e Calula, all cells come from cells. He first stated this in an essay written in 1855. 
To the right of the Institute's entryway stands one of several busts of Rudolf Virchow set up around the Charité and nearby Langenbeck Virchow House. Virchow's collection of anatomical specimens became famous in its own right, but Virchow himself achieved fame through his numerous books, speeches, and articles. Most of the institutions named for Virchow are located in Berlin's Mitte, Wedding, and Friedrichshain districts. The sole monument to Rudolf Virchow stands on Karlsplatz, right outside the Charité. This colossal, artistically original monument was created by Fritz Klimsch from 1906 to 1910. This was a new type of scholar's monument, for which Klimsch dispensed with the standing or sitting pose of the subject to be immortalized. Instead, a more allegorical tableau stands atop a rectangular pedestal, symbolizing the physician's successful battle against disease. A naked titan is seen locked in combat with the Sphinx. The monument's front displays an idealized and larger-than-life relief portrait of Virchow in marble. To the rear is a scene in relief depicting Virchow among his colleagues and students performing an autopsy. Across from the Charité stands the Langenbeck Virchow House, built in neoclassicist style. It was completed in 1915, but only dedicated after the First World War. In 2003, the Langenbeck Virchow House was retroceded to the Berlin Medical Society and the German Society of Surgery, and then renovated. The Berlin Museum of Medical History is another Charité institution. Rudolf Virchow himself was actively involved in its design. The building was constructed from 1896 to 1899, right next to the Institute of Pathology, as a museum to contain his collection of specimens. His maxim, nulla disigne preparatu, no day without a specimen, had resulted in a vast collection, both in preserving fluids and dry. Virchow had already substantially advanced the development of two museums in Berlin, the Ethnological Museum and the Museum for German Traditional Costumes. The name for the Rudolf Virchow Hospital in Berlin's Wedding District was decided as early as 1901. Today, it's part of the Charité as the Campus Virchow Clinic, the name is yet another lasting tribute Berlin has paid its honorary citizen, this time in the form of a vast area. When the hospital was officially opened in October 1906, after seven years under construction, it drew much attention and admiration from within Germany and abroad. It consists of 53 buildings arranged on an area of 25.7 hectares. Right at the start, the expansive complex was named the Garden City for the Ill. In spite of the wide-scale destruction caused by air raids in the Second World War, some of the historical ensembles have survived to the present day, the largest of which, along with the original planted courtyard, belongs to the German Heart Institute.
Virchow stayed active right through his 80th birthday. In January 1902, on his way to a meeting of scientists, he jumped from a slow-moving streetcar on Leipziger Straße and fractured the femur neck in his hip. In September 1902, he succumbed to late complications from the injury. Rudolf Virchow lies in a grave of honor in the old churchyard of St. Matthew's Congregation in Berlin's Schöneberg district. Next to him lies his wife, Rose. Virchow's tomb stands in close proximity to the grave of honor of his father-in-law, Karl Wilhelm Meyer, founder of the Obstetric Society in Berlin, of which Virchow became an honorary member in 1905. In future days, people will hardly be able to understand that a single man made such outstanding contributions to so many different fields. The saga will be widespread that at the turn of the 20th century, Virchow was a collective name for any number of superlative contemporaries and cohorts. And I wish you all the best for the International Charity Mayo Conference to improve the outcome of women cancers.